Jose Rios, Anderson Pack, and the Free Nationals. They're out on tour right now in support of Oxnard and Ventura and soon to be Free Nationals record. Check out Jose's music on the Players Pick Podcast playlist on Spotify. Dude, congratulations, brother, dude. It's good to Come see on, you. Man. Come on. Man, Jose. Come on. Come on, dude. Like, I, you're a fucking. World traveler right now, like oh, in, shit, in, on a, in the craziest way, right? Like I've been, I've been blessed, bro. Things are are happening at an extreme rate. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, congratulations. You guys just like got word about the the Grammy. Yeah, Grammy for bubbling is huge, man. Fucking, you know my my buddy, <laughs> AP, bro. He's he's up there with all the legends now, you know, in it's the insane. category. Yeah, it's been ridiculous, bro. And you're right there as a part of the absolutely, whole thing. Absolutely, man. Part of the whole movement, you know, the part of the whole the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, welcome. This is uh, uh, episode 14 of Players Pick Podcast. Let's go, baby. Number yeah. lucky number 14. Number 14. That's me. Yeah. So, uh, Jose Rios, yes, uh, sir. Anderson Pack, mm-hmm. and Free Nationals. Correct. Um, we're sitting on the, the tour bus outside of the Masonic Center in SF. San Francisco. San Francisco, ready to do their first show of the tour. That's right. February 11th, man. Yeah. We are. Just flew in. Uh, on a private jet. Yeah, lucky we got blessed, man. His new management team is uh, something, killing it. Something else, man. They they really make it taking it to the next level. Dude, that's so stoked. So, so. Yeah, that's so stoked. Yeah, man. Well, uh, I want to know, like, what what what's your, what? When did your relationship with uh, guitar pick first begin? Like, do you remember your first guitar pick or the first time somebody handed it to you? Like, what it was or the shape or any of that stuff? You did, um, in the early days? I think some of my first picks were like just shit that my homie gave me and, and my buddy he, he he played a really thin pick that like was kind of floppy. It's like more for acoustic y stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, he used it for rock too. I, I I don't know. Like he 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 liked the really like floppy thin pick. And that was one of some of the first picks I ever used. Um like a regular celluloid or something? Mm-hmm. You know what was it like a, did you remember the color? It, it, nah dude. It it, it was Oh, you know what? It was a turtle, actually. It was a turtle. It was one of the turtle guys. Okay, so it's one of the thinner uh, yeah. Tortex? Yeah, the thin turtles. Like yeah, the red or orange, orange or something? Oh, orange. it's orange. I remember that's exactly what my boy used to use, yeah. Okay, okay. So I would get a couple from him because I would just take them because I wanted one for myself. I needed one. And uh, and I thought that was kind of like the deal. I didn't know they got, what kind of like, like you know, de- like density, how, how hard they got or soft or whatever. Right. But that was my first experience with a pig, man, was one of those guys. Yeah, and then what? How old were you when that happened? When, when you first started? I was playing? sixteen years old, man, and I, I was like playing on acoustic guitar mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember what you first learned? Like, what was your first couple tunes or anything? I think I, well, I learned uh, "Pride and Joy" by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, dope! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that why you're still like a Strat guy after all these years? Oh, yeah, like man. A- yeah, Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, Eric Clapton, Buddy Guy. Ugh. I'm a Strat guy, man. I yeah. love Strats. Those are, the, those are the shit. As soon as Fender said they wanted me on board, I was like, fuck yeah. It was not even a question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. What a legendary company, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, they are good to me. It's huge. Shout out Fender. Yeah, right? Michael Schultz. Schultz. That's, What's my, up, that's Fender? my boy. Yeah, yeah. Tim Shaw, man. He's not there anymore, but he was my first first Where's rep. First, yeah. I've heard of him. I don't, I don't, I haven't met him. Tim but... Shaw's incredible, man. Yeah? Yeah. He works at Amazon now. Oh, okay. Good on him. Yeah. Well, what did you? How did you arrive? Like, what were the? Did you? What are the picks did you try before you got to what you're playing now? Do you remember like any of the ones oh, in for between? Sure. For sure. Uh, well, I did the the the, the orange uh, turtle pick. Went with that for a little bit, uh, and I kind of would take whatever people gave me basically. So I kind of don't remember the in between. Sure. But but the shift came for me in MI Musicians Institute. It was I was taking private lessons as part of the course, the GIT mm-hmm. program at MI, and I was taking lessons with a guy named Jean Marc Bocotti. He was a French guitarist from the south of France, a real a real prick dude. But I liked it, you know. It was it was a good kind of guy, the kind of guy that you, you tough wanna, love type of thing. Yeah, the kind of guy you want to be around, you know. He's like Rios, uh, you got to play with the uh, you know with aggression Rios, and you've got to you've got to play songs. People don't want to hear fucking riffs Rios, they want to hear song learn songs like he was always about 
learning full songs mm. and not just being a noodler guy, you know, just think yeah. it, you know, no, it's like play a song, you know, play something beautiful that someone wants to hear, mm -hmm. you know, with a melody and chords and, and all that. So he was always very strict on that. And then he, he fucking looked over at my pick and he, and he was like, what the fuck is this, Rios? What the <laughs> fuck? No, Rios. And he, and he gave me one of his picks and it was the fucking... That's uh, the Gator Grip. The Gator Grip pick. And I, and I took that shit and I was like, what the fuck? And he, and he was just like, he, he stood by it. He's like, dude, if you want to play hard, aggressive, tight, you're going to use this pick. And he told me to never, he told me to never use anything else. Yeah. So yeah, I fucking, I, I started, I just never stopped using these. And anyone who ever asked me for a pick, damn, what the fuck? And it was a 2.0 from the yeah, beginning? Yeah, they, they were that like, was bro, it? that's hard. Like, why is it so fucking hard? I was like, bro, that's, you know, that's how it is, you know? Yeah. I know the jazz guys use the smaller ones. That real hard song. Yeah, some of them do, yeah, but the thicker ones are but, like but, but this this John Marco Cotti, man, he put me on, dude. Like man, I've never used anything other than this. That's since, so since, cool. Since I was twenty I think I did it started when I was twenty three or twenty four and I'm thirty three now, so Sick. this is all I use, dude. And Sick now you, you know I have one with my name on it and the free Nats emblem on it. So yeah. thanks to, to Chris Johnson, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to help you, man. Yeah, brother, uh, brother Chris. This is uh this is a cool pick, dude. I I love the emblem, I love uh what you guys are up to. Yeah, and I it's need... cool to see uh, you get stoked out with your favorite pick. It means a lot, man. It means a lot. Oh man. I dream about that kind of shit as a kid, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean like I, I, yeah. I finally made a uh a pick with my my name on it yeah. stuff and I was like, yeah, you exactly, know, get exactly. stoked on that shit. Absolutely, that's awesome, man. Uh, and do you? Uh, that's cool that it was like the the teacher like that like it was like, what are you doing? Yeah, here, French guy, bro. like change your Art. game, bro. And like ever since your game has been changed. I mean, it helped. It helped a <laughs> lot with tone. It helped a lot with uh, attack. Yeah, I just I hit the guitar harder. The notes sang out more. I felt like I had more control over the instrument. You know, with that thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's there's, there's way more uh, uh, exactness when you have a, a thicker picket. It kind of demands you yeah. to be more precise. The notes sing, man. The notes really can sing. Yeah. Really sing out. You know, there's no stumbling of the pick, like kind of flapping through the string or nothing. It's just, boom, direct hit. Yeah. Yeah. And you, uh, I mean, so you you started playing when you were 16. 16. You're 33 now. 33 now, yeah. And uh, I mean, you've done you've done uh, your share. You've done a, a few world tours now. And you're like doing a, like you're doing a, probably about embarking on the biggest got tour a, now. Got like, a couple of world tours under my belt for sure. I've uh, done some arena tours, club tours, um, you name it, bro. Everything in between. I've, I've you know the only thing I haven't done is a stadium tour, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That to be yeah, you know yet to be. Yeah. So, well, what have you learned from all that, man? Like, I mean, well, I'm curious, like, man. life, life-wise. I mean, music is one thing, but yeah. like, I'm curious, like, you know, what is there anything that you could share, like, as a perspective? Like, um, what have you learned? Like, uh, I'll tell you one thing. You know, you, you you learn a lot about yourself, man, and 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 you're you're, you're speaking about outside of the instrument, the show. Yeah, I mean, all of it's good game, yeah. but I mean, uh, I'm curious. yeah, you, you learn a lot about uh, uh, the world. You know, you learn about that. There's, you know, a lot. You know, there's a we like to say that everyone's so different, and, and they are, you know, with culture, food, things things of that sort, but when you get to the root of all these people that you see all over the world, man, it's just, we're all looking for the same thing, man, you know, we want some good music, some good food, family, you know, some, some good loving, you know what yeah, I mean, if you can yeah. find it. Um, you know, we're all after the same types of things, man, and, and I've, I've learned to, like, really appreciate the world and appreciate people, man, for, for, for who they are and and what they do and with how they contribute to the world because every country has some kind of contribution to something like oh i didn't know that they did this or they created this or they were a part of that or you know oh man or what art like artists they you know american artists that they brought in to accept it you know europe especially you have any examples of like something like that uh yeah i mean you know music history uh the french the french accepted a lot of uh, black jazz musicians back in the day uh, when no one wanted them, you know, no one, like, America was, 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 you know, not letting them go through the club, like, you know, they would have to go through the back, or they couldn't eat in certain areas, and in France, they were like, yo, come, come play over here, we're gonna treat you like, the, you know, the kings that you guys are, man, wow. you guys are some of the best musicians that ever existed, and they understood that, and, and, uh, you know, Hendrix going to fucking London to get his respect, you know, mm -hmm. like, things of that sort, I, I was realizing that, you know, people in other countries, other than the United States, you know, they, 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 they accept people like a little they're a little more re, re, uh, they receive people a little better I feel like Not, nothing against the US man I love I'm I'm a uh, Mexican American yeah, yeah, I have yeah. respect for the US but, sure. but there's a lot of history with artists that didn't get a lot of love in America they go overseas 
they get some love, they come back, and you know they they handle business, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's one thing I've kind of noticed about about the industry and about about traveling and that whatnot. That's cool. I, I, that's true, man. I mean, like it's true for a lot of metal uh, heavier musicians uh-huh. too. Uh, U.S. will only support them to some degree, but they go to yeah. they go to Europe or they go to Japan, yeah. and they, they can become huge. They yeah. can play massive arenas because people yeah. want it. They're like salivating for it. But yeah. here, you like they might play at yeah, best a three or four hundred seater. Yeah. But they go to U.K. Yep. They might play just thousands and thousands. Huge people, festival you know? or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, do you have like? Uh, what what keeps you balanced like uh with all this i mean you're like you're on the go a lot these days so like what is i, mean, I know you do a little bit of yoga and stuff i mean we, we've talked about that a little bit but yeah like, yeah I, I, what's your what's your yo yeah when i get a chance and i'm like in a good posi- mood in a good like mindset like i start to do some poses man yeah you know i'll, I'll do some some tripod hand st- or headstands i'll do some some you know uh what is it uh the first position like the um like down dog or yeah, uh, what is the what is the one where you're completely kind of all the way the first position they teach you or, or when they when they say if you have if it's too intense for you, you got to get down in oh and child's child's pose, pose. Oh, I'll do yeah, some child's pose that. yeah I'll do some uh, half pigeons like things like that yep. uh, just shit to like kind of uh, get the get the body moving around um, what does it what does it feel like does it does it do something for you absolutely. mentally at all or? yeah man, for sure for sure it calms me down a little bit if I'm backstage and I'm nervous before a show or I'm feeling a little too anxious. Do you, you still know. get nervous? Yeah, sometimes, man. Depending yeah. on depending on where we at, like the, the you know who's around. Like if you know, there's some you know. When's the last time you got nervous? Uh, Saturday Night Live. I oh was, my God, yeah. that was a great show yeah, too. Yeah, I was shitting my pants, man. <laughs> dude, I, okay. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah, yeah I would be nervous before SNL, dude. Yeah, so many fucking Americans all over <laughs> the United States just watching me at one time. It was just that's like, like millions, bro. Oh, dude, it's like everybody, like so many people tune into that, and it's just it was intense, man. Damn. You no, know, it wasn't even the studio audience that made me nervous. It was the fucking cameras, just knowing that of they were course. they were teleporting that like all over. Yeah, you know, and even all over the world, people were gonna stream that shit, watch it. Like it's just don't play a wrong note, bro. Like <laughs> that's like I'd, I'd be sweating. That's my thing. I'm, dude, you you play fine, dude, but like we that's fucking my thing. nailed it. I was like, holy yeah, shit! You did play. I heard you, back. I was like, god damn. You bro. played so good. Dude. I felt so. It felt so like good, man, to do that, to get it done. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's sick, man. Yeah. I wonder, uh, like, also too, because like you. Uh, you're you're also a, a music file like an audio file of, of sorts. You produce music mm-hmm. and 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 you play multiple instruments. You're not just a guitar player. Like I recognize that you played some sick bass. Like well, I was over listening to uh, some of the Free Nats new record. Yeah, you know, uh, I was like, oh dude, good job, Kelsey. Like that ain't me, man. Yeah, That's yeah. Jose on bass. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, really? Yeah, that was me, man. He's filthy on bass too. So I was like, trying, what man. the fuck, dude? I'm trying, dude. Trying. Yeah, dude. That's sick. Yo, yo. And so, uh, but like, in, in, in when I think about uh, wanting to ask you cool, cool shit, I'm, I'm also wondering like what, like what music are you listening to right now? Like what's, maybe what's some stuff that maybe not a whole lot of people know about that well, people should know about? Man, well my, I looked at my Spotify rundown because that's a good like marker for what you listen to. Kinda, yeah. Kind of breaks down all the Yeah, it is, it is, it is. It's kind of cool. Um, I got to give it up uh I gotta give it up to Sir. I think Sir's incredible, man. That record he put out was one of the best that I How heard. You, sir? Yeah, Sir. How do you spell that? Is it just S I R? S yeah, yeah, basically yes, S I R, yeah. Oh, okay. Um Sir's incredible. Um I listen to a lot of Thundercat. Love Thundercat. I lo- love Thundercat, man. Uh Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Mortal Orchestra. Or UMO oh, okay. for short. Um What's the, where are they? Where are they at? Are they? Are, are they? Are they? They're US? from New Zealand, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm almost positive they're from New Zealand. Yeah, they are. Ruben, the lead singer, he he's incredible, man. Producer, writer, all that, man. Yeah. Um, I listen. I've been listening to Mac DeMarco. Oh, I yeah. was I was on tour with him, and I I picked up on his music. Um, the internet. I listened to a lot of internet. Dude, Stephen Lacey and that whole crew. Yeah, I love those guys, man. Those are those are the homies, man. Man, um, shout out to the internet. Yeah. Um, who else? Call me Steven. What's up, man? Let's, yeah. let's work together. I connect you guys, man. Um, oh, you know, I, I just uh, got put up on it. I just met him, too, at an internet show. Huh. It was Blood Orange, man. I don't know. Yeah, dude. That that dude is uh, that dude's something else, man. What is he about? 
man, I don't, dude, he's a guitar player, he dances, he sings, he plays piano, he, he's all over the place. He, he was like a, he reminded me of like some kind of like new age Prince guy, like situation. Like he was, he's out there, man. He's just doing his own thing and really singing and I mean, I, I don't know. You got to hear him. I saw him live and I was just like, fuck, I was just watching it like, Jesus, this is good, man. Blood Orange. Blood Orange, man. But I like Blood Oranges. That'd be easy for me to remember. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Just listen to that. You know, get you know, kind of just soak it in. But live is, I think, is his best to me. His best representation of him. Yeah. Like that. That shit was incredible. Dude. Yeah. And uh, well, I brought you. I brought you a little treat. We should. We should. Oh, we should check this out a little For bit sure. here. I got this. Uh, some purple. Purple punch. Yes, sir. Yeah. What you? What's uh? Actually, that's not it. That's it's this one. It's the one that's the kingpin. These are the little ones for the show. Uh, you have any any weed strains that you've been uh, interested in or like been digging on lately? You've been getting them in your your home area. Uh, I stick to uh, stick to the uppers, you know. I try to keep it like like that. Uh, you know, the blue dreams, the, the like my wowies, the fucking yeah. I try to keep it up, up, up. You know. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. You got it. So yeah, many, I like the uppers too. I, so many um, options at the, at the so many options yeah. at this point. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, at this point, I usually go in and just go by by taste because even though I, I prefer a sativa up, yeah, there's almost all the sativa ups are like everything's such a hybrid at this point. Like there's nothing. I, I don't know that there's very few serious like straight up sativas or straight up yeah. indicas you know it's yeah. like it's heavy one way or heavy the other but so i'm just trying to find the good tasty stuff oh know? yeah oh yeah this is good right here it's purple punch it's from uh, a place called organic can uh up in, up in santa rosa where i'm at yes sir it's a place i can ask this uh is there a cup in here yeah maybe that cup right there i'll go up the sink because that thing's full of chocolates How much of the uh, new stuff you guys playing tonight? You guys do a lot of the songs. I saw uh, you rehearsing a few of them at Soundcheck. Uh, Is a lot of the new record of Voxnard on there? Yeah, we're we're, we're mixing it in there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like we're trying to. It's like it's all so new and fresh that we're like trying to like ease it in there, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely tonight there's gonna be some Voxnard in there for sure. There's gonna be some definitely be some Voxnard. Um, Malibu, Venice, keep it interesting. Try yeah. to try to play some of the classics along with the new shit, you know. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. excited for the new set. Yeah, especially because you guys always tend to mash songs up together in cool ways, or like yeah, we try to give, give a different flavor on it on an old tune that everybody knows. And you're like, oh wait, try to keep it interesting, man. Try to keep yeah. it cool and fun, you know. Like that's the most important thing. As long as we're having fun on stage, man. Yeah, and it seems like you guys really do. Uh, it's really it's really an incredible. Uh, to watch, uh, especially and as you know this, it's just it's a spectacle in in the modern scene at this point because uh, nobody fucking plays drums and sings and performs like AP does. Yeah. Like I mean, he does all he does so much of it, and then every one of you guys in the band all do multiple things too. Mm -hmm. You have your job on the on the stage, but then you're all doing three different things off stage. Yeah, man, we uh, yeah, bro. Uh, it's it's something that that no one's like it, it's it's uh, it's incredible, man. I mean, what what I mean, just first of all, like you said, AP on the drums and singing, like it's something that's never. I mean, it's been done, but but it like the way he does it, man. It's uh, I mean, not since Phil Collins, right? Yeah, like yes. you know <laughs> Phil Collins. But, but I I'll give you one thing, man. Like Phil Collins wasn't rapping, man. Like no, that's he just, was. <laughs> that's just insane, dude. No, I know. This full breezy's doing cadences, like rap cadences, super cadences, and and doing high crazy hi hat work and fills and playing playing like some of your best drummers, man. Monster drummer. The best, the best. Monster drummer. Some of the best drummers in the world recognize him, dude. Like they know who we, they know that he's the shit, man. It's crazy to me. It's like, it's, you know, we hang out with Chris Dave and, and you know, uh, fucking um, what's his name, uh, Stephen? Oh, not Stephen, but um, the Bruner brothers. Oh, you know, and, and, Stephen Bruner, yeah, yeah and, and Thundercat. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Stephen is is Thunder. Thundercat. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I Ronald. know Ronald Brunner. Yeah, Ronald Jr. Yeah, 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 he's incredible, man. And 
just uh just so you know but yeah that 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 is the base having him there and then and then we f we fill in the the you know the pieces like we fill in the like the blanks and and then it's just it's uh, together we we're, we're a family man that's that's it man we don't we can't uh we don't we don't pretend and there's no there's no fabrication it's just purely friendship and and and, and years and years of playing together man that's the vibe yeah, too yeah. that's the vibe because mm -hmm. you guys like a lot of bands that might be uh your peers yeah at this point yeah uh, are not all like family bands necessarily right like no, uh, you know, it's, uh, that they haven't been together in this way like yeah. where you guys have been there since breezy love joy yeah, days yeah, and man. like a lot of times these, writing these, the whole time these cats are you know they're 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 going for you know they get in the gigs and they and they step into situations sometimes and they're not very happy you know I, I, I see some of the homies out when I'm out on tour and they're on a hit like and they're not necessarily like into it right and it's like you know and I get it because they don't really listen to what they're playing sometimes you know but they but they're making their money which I can't even be mad at you know you got to pay rent you got to pay the bills just like everybody else man yeah. so but but yeah with with us we were very very lucky man to. And I mean, I don't want to say luck because we worked hard, but but it, we were very blessed to uh, always do it our way, man, and and, and and to do it together, you know. And we, we always just stuck it out together, and it's it's, it's given it's brought us a long way, man. And obviously, Anderson Pack has just worked just relentlessly to to make it to the top, and mm -hmm. and we, you know, he was he, he took us with, he took us with him, you know, like and we, right. we were there to contribute however and whenever we could, man. And it's a, and it it shows you that he's like a great band leader. I see mm -hmm. him on stage at Soundcheck. I see him the way he talks to you guys. I see him the way that he interacts and the way he he's always got a, a real positive vibe too. You know, like yeah. and if that's if I mean that's the type of guy you want to see su be successful. Uh huh. I mean I I mean I know when I see you and I meet you and, I, and we and we and we've been friends for years now. Yeah. And it's like. Uh, I think about you and this band. I'm like, dude, I'm I want to see you succeed because like of the type of human that you are and how that you engage people and what how you uh, how you try to give back as often as you can. You know. Yeah, for sure, man. It's cool, man. I know we're running li uh, yeah, I'm sorry, low on time. Yeah, yeah, these guys are we're back running low on time, and things. we're getting ripped. So yeah. we should probably get inside and let yeah. get, let you get to your thing. I'm gonna go get warmed up for the show. Oh yeah, yeah another thing. Uh, I uh, when I met the Red Hot Chili Peppers, or I met Flea and uh, oh. Anthony Kiedis, and I, you know, all the guys, and um, they were uh, one thing Flea was mentioned to me was like before every show, man, that dude practices for like an hour. What he has his bass and he just walks around. He's what a bad like all, every show, at least an hour of practice before, and we were. We were sitting there when he said that, all of us, and we looked at each other like, we're assholes. Because, like, we would, like, you know, we kind of noodle around before a show, kind of, but yeah. after he said that, we had all, we had a bass, guitar, drums, and everything put in our green room, even if it was a shitty little setup, but for now, we always practice before the show, like, at least 30 minutes, Yeah, you know, and, and so, remember that, kids. Yeah, let's get you to the green room, yeah. bro. Thanks right. for being here, man. Players Pick Podcast, episode 14, Jose Rios, and we'll pack Free Nationals. Late. Players Pick Podcast Picks and Perspective with Chris Johnson This episode of Players Pick Podcast Brought to you by our good friends At Jim Dunlop Guitar Products Kiesel Custom Guitars And Mackie Monitors Mixers and Headphones Sound Design by Drew of the Drew Intro Voiceovers And Peas By the Amazing Mini Joe until next time.